In optics, the Ewald Osine extinction theorem, sometimes referred to as just extinction theorem, is a theorem that underlies the common understanding of scattering as well as refraction, reflection, and diffraction. It is named after Paul Peter Ewald and Carl Wilhelm Osine, who proved the theorem in crystalline and isotropic media, respectively, in 1916 and 1915. Originally, the theorem applied to scattering by an isotropic dielectric objects in free space. The scope of the theorem was greatly extended to encompass a wide variety of bianisotropic media. Topic. Overview An important part of optical physics theory is starting with microscopic physics the behavior of atoms and electrons and using it to derive the familiar, macroscopic, laws of optics. In particular, there is a derivation of how the refractive index works and where it comes from, starting from microscopic physics. The Ewald Osine extinction theorem is one part of that derivation, as is the Lorentz Lorenz equation, etc. When light traveling in vacuum enters a transparent medium like glass, the light slows down, as described by the index of refraction. Although this fact is famous and familiar, it is actually quite strange and surprising when you think about it microscopically. After all, according to the superposition principle, the light in the glass is a superposition of the original light wave, and the light waves emitted by each of the atoms in the glass. Remember, light has an electric field that pushes atoms back and forth, which causes the atoms to emit dipole radiation. Individually, each of these waves travels at the speed of light in vacuum, not at the slower speed of light in glass. Yet when the waves are added up, they surprisingly create only a wave that travels at the slower speed. The Ewald Osine extinction theorem says that the light emitted by the atoms has a component traveling at the speed of light in vacuum, which exactly cancels out, extinguishes, the original light wave. Additionally, the light emitted by the atoms has a component which looks like a wave traveling at the slower speed of light in glass. Altogether, the only wave in the glass is the slow wave, consistent with what we expect from basic optics. A more complete description can be found in Classical Optics and its Applications, by Masood Mansouripur. A proof of the classical theorem can be found in Principles of Optics, by Born and Wolf, and that of its extension has been presented by Akhlesh Laktakia. Topic. Extinction lengths and tests of special relativity The characteristic extinction length of a medium is the distance after which the original wave can be said to have been completely replaced. For visible light, traveling in air at sea level, this distance is approximately 1 mm. In interstellar space, the extinction length for light is 2 light years at very high frequencies. The electrons in the medium can't follow the original wave into oscillation, which lets that wave travel much further, for 0.5 MeV gamma rays, the length is 19 cm of air and 0.3 mm of lucite, and for 4.4 GeV, 1.7 m in air, and 1.4 mm in carbon, special relativity predicts that the speed of light in vacuum is independent of the velocity of the source emitting it. This widely believed prediction has been occasionally tested using astronomical observations. For example, in a binary star system, the two stars are moving in opposite directions, and one might test the prediction by analyzing their light. See, for instance, the De Sitter double star experiment. Unfortunately, the extinction length of light in space nullifies the results of any such experiments using visible light, especially when taking account of the thick cloud of stationary gas surrounding such stars. However, experiments using X rays emitted by binary pulsars, with much longer extinction length, have been successful. <laughs> 